Hello then, welcome back to Tabari Stan. Last time we ended up in the Regency Council for a decade, and, uh, well, we also cut Karakonlu pretty much uh, down to a manageable size. I'm currently uh, working on the annexation of both, well, both of these, which of course is actually taking a while. I think I might have to look into uh, getting myself this guy, which should in theory speed the process up quite a bit here, as you can see, so it's going to be nice to have. And we've got a heir to the throne, 234. He's better, marginally, but he is better, that is the important part. And he knows how to do uh, military stuff, which is uh, very much wonderful. However, we are going to wait until, of course, we get our diplomats back, and then we're going to play on the Golden Horde, with the goal of, hopefully, vassalizing or next in release. We'll see what we end up with. There we go, we have Integrate Gaskmuk, and with that, Dagestan has actually become accepted. Now, next one is going to be uh, got next month, so we don't have anything to worry about there. Or well, at least I thought it was going to happen. There we go. Sherman has been integrated, which is good. That means we basically now have a fairly substantial land force also to, uh, to boot, but we are going to cut it down by about 4,000 men, I think. And even so, we're still losing a little bit of money due to the just the sheer size of it. Georgia, of course, and uh, Circassia will not like this. It's not something that I'm surprised with. But it's just how things are going to be. And we're going to go with a... Actually, it shows priority. It could be useful. But we are going to take this because it gives me... what well, it do make uh, the provinces a little bit cheaper. So hopefully we can uh, we can make this work. I am going to be reliant here on basically a lot from Georgia. And uh, a bit from... Uh, a bit from, uh, of course, Acacia itself. But uh, all in all, I think we should be able to get, again... A very decent result here. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be anything to question even. So uh, hopefully here the Georgian forces will march on, uh, on the Ashrakhan people, and uh, I'll just sit here and we'll see what happens. Apparently, vassalization is out of the question now that the Golden Horde uh, got the provinces back here due to rebels, measure patriots, if I remember correctly. So I might have to consider some, uh, some other way of making, well, this work. I think we might go for again taking the Ashrakhan province and uh, and releasing them as a vassal in the area it could definitely be uh, it could definitely be I think the more beneficial way of doing things I don't really see a, a better option as of this moment and Ashrakhan as you see do actually have a major amount of land so it's not a it's not a bad vassal unfortunately they do not have anything they actually have one province in a guy as well so it's a, it's a fairly, fairly decent bet, I guess I can say. So for the time being, we'll just wait, and hopefully we can uh, get ourselves into, well, some wars where we will gain the advantage. So the Golden Horde actually do have a favorable amount of troops here. They have 8,000 currently stationed in their capital, which means I'll have to bring up my main army from down south, join it up with uh, this army, and then we're going to go up and have a booth with this army. Unfortunately, it seems like my vassals cannot actually well, walk through the uh, land of the Crimeans, which of course is not good at all. But on a more positive note here, if I could just bring this down, I think that potentially I might be able to pull off a vassalization here. Uh, that is of course if I allow the siege to last for a little while, but it is kind of a doubtful situation. I just have to see how it goes. For now, however, I will not be taking national ideas. We do have a fairly big uh, pool, 1398 power. So I don't have to use anything right now, and we're also lucky enough to get, uh, well, very soon, an next level military attack. And I'm actually tempted to just wait until I get this to before I face off against the Golden Horde army here. And the reason for that, again, is really, really simple. It's so that I can get uh, a little bit of stronger military that will be really useful. And unfortunately, we have some Orthodox Zealots here, which actually, funnily enough, the Georgians are getting rid of for me. Georgians are orthodox, mind you, so that is why it's funny. Uh, but anyways, we are going to get our tech here. And with that, we have the Arcubus, which gives us a military tax per 0.25, combo with increased by 2, infantry shock by 0.3, and it gets a new cavalry that I'm not going to be using right now. We're going to march on the on their army, though, and hopefully we can get them before they run away. And we could. So again here, military tech, really, really important. Really easy to decimate your opponent if given the... Uh, well, right opportunity, like that one. And hopefully now I can siege them without too much trouble, and hopefully I can actually 
potentially get the vassalization running here. If I manage to vassalize the Golden Horde, I think much is done because then I can just pick off Crimea, pick off uh, the other hordes nearby, and basically get myself back into the position of, uh, well, to some degree, super. Uh, super golden hoarder that I had in, in my last game. So we'll see if I can actually pull this off and off now. I'll just allow the teaching to uh, go its way. And we'll see if the golden horde actually loses some war square here, but it doesn't actually seem like that will be the case. Asha Khan I can force the release, which of course is a really big area. But I'm actually tempted to just take Tarek and Asha Khan myself. It's 90% war score, which is a lot in this case. And then I can probably go for getting us or vassalizing them in the next war. These are two very rich provinces that I would probably benefit from taking. And of course, this will be a little bit of an awkward one uh, if I go for, of course, for creating Asha Khan as a vassal here. Because if I. I could do that, and if the Golden Horde uh, managed to take back the provinces here, or basically the rebels rise up and take it back, then I can. Uh, and I can always use that to my advantage, but it doesn't seem like I do have uh, I have too much of a choice, so to speak. So I think I'm going to take these two just to make it a little bit cheaper for me in the future. I'm also tempted to just take these, but uh, we'll see. Now, guy will be pissed. The Ottomans will be pissed. It's a Sunni Sunni country after all. So taking all of this could potentially piss them off more than I more than I'd uh, unlike. So I think what we'll do is just go for this deal. And we'll also form the, force them to give up the claims in Acacia. I'll call these two myself because I uh, kind of need the provinces, so to speak. And again, Crimea, I'm a little bit sure I want to handle these guys. They are. I'll have to take these three provinces at the very least if I want to get that uh, connection, so to speak. So I think what we're going to do now is focus on getting Circassia annexed, and then we'll fabricate claims on these two. Uh, potentially fabricate some claims on Kilsil uh, Yar and Yeti School and basically take these five in the next war and worst case scenario the Golden Horde will take this back during the during the well peaceful times so I think I might again I'll probably due to the fact that it will take time to annex Circassia be able to uh, be able to get another war against the Golden Horde before that happens I can also count Maria Sam, for instance, making another go at taking a ton of provinces. And all in all, I will probably be able to come out on top again, even if I just go for taking these two provinces in this war. So, uh, yeah, we're going for that. We're also going to take the cash, of course, because it's going to hurt them a little bit. And they're not going to give up claims. We want to try and keep the peace as, long, as short as possible. So Therik and Astra Khan is now part of my realm. And again, it's going to be a little bit expensive to uh, convert them. But Tarek is already Shia, which is a little bit interesting. So Asha Khan is going to be the problem child that we're going to dump our entire army on. And it's already maximum autonomy, which makes it even a scary area. But Tarek is not, so I think... Let's check here if it's actually possible. Uh, Ardabil is actually contributing to this, but the gas of Kamuk will not be able to break free. And as such, I think I can just uh, leave things as they are, if you will. And diplomatic tech-wise, I think we're just going to also leave things as they are, because there's no uh, there's no reason for me to to make any big changes there. We are going to an exocation, however, and it's going to be pretty damn slow. Two diplomatic power a month, which means that this will take five years. So again, by the time we actually annex them, the uh, truce will be up, and we can go for vassalization of the Golden Horde. But uh, I will improve relations with Georgia in the meantime. Uh, I'm also kind of tempted to do that with the Ottomans, but again... Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Well, I think I just won this game, to be perfectly frank. Like a frank. But yeah, the Ottomans alliance... Seriously, if I have an alliance with the Ottomans, it, it keeps me safe from the Ottomans, it keeps me safe from the Timurids, and basically now I can just go ahead and pounce on whoever I feel should, well, get hurt. So it's a really, really beneficial way for all of us. I can even get a royal marriage with them. Imagine if I get the Ottomans in a union again. That would be hilarious, but unfortunately they're not part of anything that I want, so it wouldn't actually make any sense. But we are going to fabricate claims on both of... Uh, 
the ones that we can. We're probably going to fabric claim on Marjorie as well, as soon as okay, she has been annexed. Uh, the reason being that it will be cheaper than to vassalize, uh, well, said, uh, said horde. So I will be benefiting from this one way or another. But uh, for now, we'll wait until we can get the next set of ideas, or our first set of ideas, if you will. And I think I'll just have to go for religious here. I do need to be able to convert things, and to convert things, I kind of need religious here. There are not really too many modifiers that I can, well, fish out as a Shia nation here. I can, well, form things, but as you can see here, unifying Islam, but that won't really help. And, of course, the forming the nations won't really help either. So, of course, this one will be great, but need an admin skill of 3. And the funny part here is that I don't think even the air has an admin skill of 3, so... I think I have to take a religious idea just for the sake of being able to turn the co the promise that I take, because if we do take a look here on the religious map mode, Shia is dominant in the area, but I have to fight the Timurids for that. And unless the Timurids and the Elements has a falling out, I don't want to take the chance or fight them just yet. They're just too strong, they're just too dangerous. It wouldn't be a very nice result. Let's just say that. I don't want, don't want to take that chance, especially after putting myself in such a very good uh, position here. And no, we are going to slaughter those auto sellers because I will not allow them to turn a Shia province. I have no idea if they can, but I will not take the chance. So I'll sacrifice a little bit of manpower here, but uh, hopefully it will be in for good case, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'll just wait, and the truce with the dreaded uh, Golden Horde runs out in 81, so 60 years. Which means that I have plenty of time to uh, annex Ocasia, and uh, hopefully use it to my advantage. The only real issue here is if my uh, if this guy dies, because then it will just stop. I need his diplomatic reputation to pull this off. So uh, I'll just uh, sit here waiting, fabricate some more claims, improve relations with Georgia, uh, Ottomans, get... Uh, Get my friendship with them, uh, etched down in stone, so to speak. And once we are done with that, I'll probably get back to you. We'll see how it plays out. There we go, so Keiji has been integrated, and with that I get the Malice again. I also decided to take a new mission, which made... Well, we completed it, which gave me a little bit of points here. Kassan wants an alliance, no thank you. Install Crimea, our rival. Don't mind if I do. Now, the funny part here is that Crimea is actually at war currently with, guess who, the Golden Horde. So, I kind of want to get in their way, which is probably what we are going to do. However, Georgia do hate my guts. They're not really uh, a fan of my policies thus far. But the Ottomans are. They really, really like me, which is, of course, good. And, unfortunately, now I do have the problem of having to convert some lands here. Because, as you can see here, uh, the modifiers from this are not good. Unfortunately, after I can't, I can't convert just yet, so we're going to go with this. I can't actually westernize, should I decide to do so, but 2800 and rest, advice it costs. I don't have to do anything in Europe, I have no reason to do that. It would basically put me behind, it would most likely undo everything I've done thus far, and thus, westernization becomes a really horrible idea. What we are going to do, however, is take an admin of uh, national ideas. And again here, I am going to go for religious, because I do need that divine supremacy to be able to convert everything that I will need here to keep my realm safe. Of course, going humanist for the religious unity, uh, national unrest, and etc. could definitely be really, really useful. Let's just face it, it's a really, really good idea, Seth. This thing alone is uh, tremendous. But uh, the biggest issue, as I said here, is the religious unity is going to be helpful. But of course, I'm already at minus well, at 73%. The problem is the province that I will conquer will just bring me even to a lower threshold, so there's no reason for me to take humanist ideas right now. I need to be able to convert the lands that I conquer, or integrate, and the only way to do that will be through the use of religious ideas. Also, religious ideas as a general do bring a lot of free stability events, which will make more of them make an up for the, uh, well, loss of all the admin points invested. It gives you a pretty decent casus belli, stability cost modifier, uh, I'm probably just going to go with uh, up to the mind supremacy here, but let's face it, if I go to Inquisition, I have, or Inquisition, I have a really, really good, I can basically convert, uh, well, Sunny, really easily, so that could definitely be a thing to do, and if I get the Golden Horde as my vassal, I'm definitely going to do that, but of course the fact that they now are at war with the Ottomans makes the vassalization something I will not do until they're done with all of their other wars, 
of course the two more years until we can declare war so there's nothing to worry about we're also going to take diplomatic tech for here marketplace and dock i can now build docks and marketplace along with having a longer trade range now astrakhan isn't actually being as profitable as i would have hoped but there's not really too much i can do about that at the current moment we'll just have to we'll just about have to sit by and, uh, and wait here now Alenia is what we are currently converting so i'll drop the armies there and we'll sit there for a couple of years waiting for basically our uh well war here with uh with the golden horde we are going to vassalize them that is the goal if i have to go an x release that would be fine but i think if i again get those ideas then it shouldn't or since i've taken religious ideas it shouldn't be too much of a problem just keeping them sunny and then decimating Crimea after that. Crimea, of course, is do have the Zildan alliance with the Ottomans, but let's face it, if I declare war on a guy and bring in the Ottomans, then things are going to get kind of dicey here, because the Timurids would be involved, and that would be a really weird thing to do, let's just be honest, it would be hilariously funny, but at the same time it would be hilariously weird if I ended up with uh, Crimea and a guy, Timurids, uh, versus me and... Uh, and the Ottomans, but it, we would probably win that war, and I'll probably leave it in the Ottomans' hands. So I have to see here if the Crimea gets another alliance that I can use. For now, it's not likely. And I have no use for navy, so we're just going to get completely rid of that. But uh, I'll wait a little bit. I'll probably end this episode once we get to uh, declaration of war. So for now, I'll leave it as is, and we'll see how this go. Now, I just realized something really interesting here. If you insult the rival, you actually get 5 power protection, which is hilarious. Because that means you should probably insult your rivals uh, once every now and again. So let's just check who my rivals are. I didn't know it's actually a rival, so the mission that I took was probably a horrible one. Uh, basically here, I have a mission now to get some relations up to 125 with them. I'll get a little bit of diplomacy points as a reward. And I think that is more than a reasonable, uh, well, reason to do it. So we're going to relation up here. Truce is running out, 2nd of July next year. There we go, the truce with the Golden Horde is up, and with that we are going to declare war. The goal will be take Major, because that is not something these guys are sieging, which will give me a ticking war score from the get-go. Unfortunately, the Ottomans cannot be called into this war. I am tempted to wait and then call them in, but uh, this limits what I can do. So what I'm thinking I'll do instead here is actually fabricate a claim on Trebizond, declare war on them, bring in the Ottomans, uh, most likely hand it over to the Ottomans if I can, and basically then declare on Crimea with the goal of bringing in a guy without, well, without a, a ally deal, and of course then uh, taking back whatever is part of the Golden Horde, and that I can then, uh, well, rebuild the Horde from, if you will, because they, they are going to be losing some provinces here. And of course, we are going to give back what we can uh, once we actually uh, declare war on Crimea. So I'm going to start fabricating some claims of Cuban, get a school, Kisu Yar, and uh, we'll be prepared for war once we once we begin here. But for now, there's going to be the last war, uh, most likely that we are going to declare on the Golden Horde here with the goal of taking Majar. So uh, I'll just sit back, I'll wait, and uh, we'll continue next episode. So thank you for watching. Please leave some comments, praise criticism. Anything you feel like, some sound advice. Um, unfortunately, I didn't use the uh, advice in terms of uh, turning these two into marches, but I didn't really feel that I needed to, at least not in this playthrough. And uh, I have been messing around with the audio a bit, you probably have realized I'm trying to be upping the volume a bit in, uh, well, in editing. And hopefully, I've also been, uh, well, successful in removing some of the clicking noises and basically uh, weird, smushy. Uh, mountain noises that I make every now and again. So hopefully that has been a little bit helpful. But we're going to continue next time. Bye!